Hey guys, welcome back to part 6 of my Discord.py series. So in this part, we're going to be going over reactions and waiting for reactions and how to use those reactions, right? So last time we went over how to host a bot on the Heroku server 24-7. So for this part right now, I'm going to be turning off that bot on Heroku so that our bot doesn't conflict with that bot, right? So right now, the first thing we need to do is change this file name. So this is not a very good file name, right? Because another file doesn't describe anything, it doesn't do anything. So we need to um, rename it. So I'm going to rename it into a game.py because this is where we're going to be storing all of our games, right? Okay, so let's hop over to the load games function. So as you can see inside this load games function, we want to be able to get the user's reaction, right? Remember last time how we um, did the rows and how the users can just add a row using those reactions? So basically we want to do the same thing, but on a smaller scale, right? So now the way we would um, get that user's reaction is through a dot wait for command, right? So this dot wait for command comes from a bot, our bot variable that we defined when we made our Discord bot. So up here, when we did the commands.bot, what we're saying here is that we're assigning this function to the variable bot. We need this bot right now because this is where the wait for command comes in. So let's go down here and let's give it another parameter called bot, right? And we pass it in up here and now we can use bot inside this function, right? So the first thing we want to do is have an await because this is a, a async function and to trigger something we need a wait, right? So the next thing we need to do is call that bot that we just added as a parameter. So what do we do? We would then do a dot wait for. Okay, so what this wait for command will do is that it will basically uh, wait for an event, right? So what event do we want to give it? So we can give it a bunch of events, right? So we can give it a reaction add, a reaction remove. We can also give it like a message sends, a server leave, server join. But the main thing we're waiting in for and we're after is a reaction underscore add, right? So we're after a reaction add event. So whenever a reaction is added to some message, this bot would then wait for it, right? And it'll do something. We don't want some random users to come along and add an emoji and it gets and triggers this uh, wait for, right? So we want to give it a timeout. So what this timeout set would do is that after a specific amount of time, the bot would then just stop looking for this, right? And move on. So we want to give it as 30 seconds. Okay, so now our function looks good, right? But one final thing we have to do is that we have to check for some reactions. So the first check we have to do is that we have to check that if, so the first check we have to do is that the bot is not the user who added that emoji, right? Because up here, when the bot adds an emoji, it counts as a um, reaction add, right? So we need to call for a check. So the way we would call for a check is that we would define a function, a regular function, not an async function or anything. It's just a regular function. We would then call this function a check reaction. And what do we give it? We give it the reaction and the user, right? And then inside this function itself, we then check. So we then check if the user is not equal to bot.user. So basically what this command is saying is that we want to check that the user who added the reaction is not the bot user. So it's not the bot basically. So we want to check that the person who added this um, reaction is not the bot. The next thing we want to do is we want to check and make sure that it's actually the number one or the number two emoji, right? So then we would have an and statement and then we have a bracket. Basically what an and statement does is that it checks if this side is true and if it, the uh, right side is true, if they're both true, it, it outputs a true. If either one side is false, then it, it becomes false automatically. The only way for it to be true is if both sides are true. So then we would wait for if the string version, the string of the reaction. And what do we want to pull from this reaction? We want to pull the emoji, right? So we want to pull the emoji and then we want to check if the string version of the reaction's emoji, if that is equal to our reaction so the one and now another version so we want to then check if is either equal to one or is equal to two right so we want to copy this over bring reaction emoji is equal to one and we want to replace this one with a two and what do we want to do now we want to return whatever this gives us back right so if this is true and this whole area is false it would then return false right if both of these are true it would then be true what this does inside the wait for command is that it would then check these two um variables right and it would check if they're true if it is true it would then move on and use this wait for and it would use that reaction right if it's not then obviously it won't move on okay so now that we finished our check function remember this await function will return back two items it will return the reaction and it will also return the user. 
So we want to assign these two variables to whatever this whole command output. So then we would then we can now use these two variables inside of our code, right? So we want to, we want to do now is that we want to check the reactions emoji. So we want to check if it's equal to one, then we will play tic tac toe, and if it's equal to two, then we'll play rock paper scissors, right? So whenever we want to add more games, we'll just add the emoji up here, and we would just add another if else statement down here, right? So now that we finished this, let's start building our um uh, tic tac toe game. So let's call a Death, and let's call this tic-tac-toe right and what do we want to give it let's give it the ctx first and now let's do something so now let's get the user's character because we want each user to have a specific emoji right so let's do something so let's uh, have a current player and let's make that current player equal to one because it's player one right we would then want to send out a message and tell that user to pick our emoji right so let's do an await await ctx.send so we're sending out a message and we want to say player and then we want to say a number right so we then we want to say current player whatever this current player is so we want to cast it into a string because right now it is an integer and you can't concatenate integers and strings right so we cast it over current player and then we want to say something else so we want to say so we want to say pick your character right and we want to give it a little like react emoji right so we want to tell the users to pick a character, right? So we want to do the same thing. We want to bot that way for So we need the bot variable that so we call bot up here. And now we would have to do a reactions, reaction user. And we would sign that to a wait for, bot wait for. What do we wait for? We wait for a reaction underscore add. And we have a timeout of 30 seconds, right? And we also need a check, but we didn't write a check yet. So we need to write a new check. So let's do a def check reactions. And let's give it the reaction and the user, right? So now what do we want inside this check? We don't care what emoji it is because the user can pick any emoji, right? We don't really care much about anything else, right? We don't really care anything else. We only care about the user. We want to make sure this is not the bot, right? So what we do is that we would then do a return user is not equal to bot.user. So basically what we're saying is that we don't want the bot's reaction to count. And then we just pass in check. That's basically it. And then what do we want to do? We want to then return the string version of the reaction dot emoji, right? So we want to return the string emoji. Now do you guys see what we're doing here? So basically what we're doing here is that we basically just wrote a function that we can then use more than once, right? To get the user's reaction. So let's copy this and let's erase it. Now let's make it its own function, right? So let's do a async function, define, and let's call it get user character. So what do we want to give it? We want to give it the CTX, we want to give it the bot, and what else do we use? We use the current player. And let's just paste it in. And as you can see, everything works perfectly, right? Because we pass it in. So how would we call it up here? So we can call functions up here, right? So get user char character. We just need to pass it in the items that I need. There you go. So right now we're calling this function, but we want to get back the emoji, right? So let's call this player one. Let's call one and let's set this equal to uh, get user character. And we'll just call it on player one, current player. But since we're calling a, a async function, we need to await it, right? So let's do the same thing for player two. It's down here, player two. And let's change this number to two. And let's make this current player plus one. So right now what we're doing here is that we're calling the get user character on both player one and player two, right? So um, let me show you this in action. So let's have a ctx.send. So let's have a little message. So let's have a, a string and let's do a player one and let's give it player one is equal to player one, right? And let's give a new line and let's give it player two and let's make it player two's character, right? Okay, so now that we've sent our little message, now let's remember, we have to await oh, this message, right? So let's run it and let's see what happens. Let's bring it up on my Discord and right here, I have the games row. Let's see if I run it and without the games row, it would then give me back an error. I need the games row to be able to run this, right? So it's working perfectly, right? So now let's call games again while I have the row and see what happens. It presents me with a choice of rock, paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors or tic-tac-toe, right? Let's click one. Nothing, right? Nothing happened. Let's look over here on line 20. Even though I wrote the functions, I never called it. So over here, we need then need to do await tic-tac-toe and let's pass in the stuff it needs. It needs a CTX and it needs the bot. So yeah, we pass it in and let's rerun it. Let's see what happens. So now we're actually calling tic-tac-toe and now let's call this, let's call it games, right? We have the games role. So we expect it to send us an embedded message. So now we're sending us an embedded message to pick a game. So let's pick tic-tac-toe and let's see what happens. So now it's presenting us a choice to pick a character, right? So now let's react with this with an emoji. So let's just pick this game icon. We're now on player two, let's pick this emoji. And now, see, 
um, it now sends a message with whatever emoji we are. We can then use this emoji to populate our board, right? So yeah, that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> and now, so now, as you can see right here, we have a bunch of junk right here, right? So we want to clear out all of the three messages, right? So we want to do after we get this, we then want to do a um, purge. Now we want to actually do a purge after this, right? Because we don't want the, all that junk to cloud up Discord channel, right? So let's do an await and let's do a ctf.channel.purge, right? But we want to limit our purge. So we want to delete the last three messages that we got sent, right? So let's rerun it. Okay, so now let's check out our new messages with the clear, right? So now it's called games. It clears our original message and it brings us a choice, right? So now let's pick tic-tac-toe and now let's pick what emoji we want to be. Let's be the game emoji. And let's be the smiling face. Now it'll clear everything and just present us with our two choices, right? So what we went over today is we went over the bots wait for command. And we also learned about the check function, right? How to check for if it's not the bot or not. And we also learned about how to split up our file into different functions. So it's more uh, malleable. You can use it in different places and it's more functional, right? So yeah, that's basically it for today. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.